woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it. Even during the early hours, they're practicing evil and they're thinking about the evil upon their beds. They're contemplating before they go to sleep and their every thought is on evil, just as in the days of Noah and just as in our day as well. Because it is in the power of their hand, they have this authority to do so, mainly speaking unto the rulers, to which the prophets railed against quite often. And they covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, against this family do I devise an evil from which ye shall not remove your necks. Neither shall ye go haughtily for this time is evil. In that day shall one take up a parable against you and lament with a doleful lamentation and say, we be utterly spoiled. He hath changed the portion of my people. How hath he removed it from me? Turning away, he hath divided our fields. And this proverb would be one of mockery, how they've been taken. And we know that all the neighboring nations mocked the Jews and were glad that Israel fell whenever they did. Therefore thou shalt have none that shall cast a cord by lot in the congregation of the Lord. Prophesy ye not. Say they to them that prophesy, they shall not prophesy to them that they shall not take shame. And just in plain vernacular, they're just saying, don't prophesy unto us. We don't feel like hearing bad news. All we want to hear is good things, same as today. What is meant right here? Therefore thou shalt have none that shall cast a cord by lot in the congregation of the Lord. In essence, Clark commented, you will no more have your inheritance divided to you by lot as it was to your fathers. Ye shall neither have fields nor possessions of any kind, you will be totally at the mercy of your worst enemies. O thou that art named the house of Jacob, Israel, pretty much all the land being addressed right here. Is the spirit of the Lord straightened? Are these his doings? Do not my words do good to him that walketh uprightly? Even of late my people is risen up as an enemy. Ye pull off the robe with the garment from them that pass by securely as men averse from war. The Lord through the prophet dwells here upon the continued rapacity of the people, how evil that they were, continual evil, even little evils they would commit, things that would be often just easily avoided. They robbed the quiet, inoffensive traveler of both outer and inner garment. They took away both cloak and coat. The women of my people have ye cast out from their pleasant houses. From their children have ye taken away my glory forever. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink, he shall even be the prophet of this people. Speaking of false prophets, and how if you're a false prophet, you'll be the prophet given to them. Matthew Poole commented on these false prophets, a prophet that pretends to walk in the spirit. He only pretends to have the spirit of the Lord upon him. And how many of do we see on television that do this in essence to have the spirit of prophecy. And on that pretense takes the boldness to promise pleasing things in God's name. They presume they get a thought in their head and they think that every thoughts from God, like their God or something like their brain or their mind is God. And, very, very harsh. And we see this throughout the whole land. This is actually quite terrifying to see that this is a judgment placed upon them. This is a plague, these false prophets. And we see these all over the world. A very telling symbol for how God sees our world today. Verse 12, I will surely assemble, O Jacob, all of thee. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as the sheep of Basra down here in Edom. As the flock in the midst of their fold, they shall make a great noise by reason of the multitude of men. The breaker has come up before them. They have broken up and have passed through the gate. This is pointing towards what shepherds would do with their flocks. They'd break them up, bring them in through the gate and are gone out by it. And their king shall pass before them and the Lord on the head of them. And of course, this breaker is speaking of the Messiah. Whenever he judges between nations sheep and goats and all of this chapter three 
And I said, Hear, I pray you, O heads of Jacob, and ye princes of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know judgment, who hate the good and love the evil, who pluck off their skin from off them and their flesh from off their bones, who also eat the flesh of my people and flay their skin from off them, and they break their bones and chop them in pieces as for the pot and as flesh within the cauldron. Now, leaving off in the previous chapter 2, it leaves off speaking of the great shepherd, Christ, the breaker, how he breaks up the flock, divides, and does well in peace. Now we're being told about these evil ones that take their flock and they strip them and cut them up and eat them. He had described the good shepherd. Now, in contrast, he describes those who ought to be shepherds of the people, these rulers, to feed, guard, direct them, but who were their butchers, who did not shear them, but flayed them, who fed on them, not fed them. He heaps up their guilt act by act. First, they flay, that is, take away their outer goods. Then they break their bones in pieces, the most solid parts on which the whole frame of their body depends to get at the very marrow of their life and so feed themselves upon them. They would take and take and take until there was nothing left to take. Then shall they, these rulers, cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. Thus saith the Lord concerning these false prophets that make my people err, that bite with their teeth and cry peace, and he that putteth not into their mouths, they even prepare war against them. Now this is speaking of uh, the, cons the conspiracies behind the scenes. These false prophets would make a league with the rulers. And if the rulers stopped paying them or if the people stopped paying them giving their tithes like a televangelist if his money suddenly cut off then he would start prophesying of war therefore night shall be unto you that ye shall not have a vision and it shall be dark unto you that ye shall not divine and the sun shall go down over the prophets the false prophets and the day shall be dark over them then shall the seers be ashamed these false prophets and the diviners confounded yea they shall all cover their lips for there is no answer of god we're being told about how they'd cover their lips their upper lip false prophets being cut off from all communion with god were to put a covering upon the upper lip it was also a sign of mourning for one dead and Ezekiel was commanded to awaken the astonishment, if you'll remember Ezekiel, was commanded to awaken the astonishment of the people by omitting to cover his upper lip when his wife died. So this was pointing towards the mourning even of the dead, even of the communion that they used to have with God. But if they did have any fellowship with God, it would be quickly cut off. Now the true prophet himself speaks up. He says, you all have no fellowship with God. And then he comes into this, but truly I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob, his transgression and to Israel, his sin. Hear this, I pray you, ye heads of the house of Jacob and princes of the house of Israel that abhor judgment and pervert all equity. They build up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. The heads thereof, the rulers judge for a reward, a bribe, there was so much crooked dealings back then, and the poor were the ones in whom felt the after effects of it. And the Lord sees every bit of this. If you and I seen it, we would be appalled by it and say, oh man, judgment has to come upon these people. God sees it every act, every thought, every conspiracy, even the thoughts of thoughts. I mean, uh, and the priests thereof teach for higher and the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord among us? None evil can come upon us. And this type of false security is constantly rebuked by these prophets. A very a telling thing for us. We should all uh, be in fear and trembling of the Lord all the days. As though the very fact that they had in their midst the temple. You see, they had Solomon's temple, so they felt very secure wherein the Lord's presence was assured would protect them from all harm, where whatever their conduct might be. Sin all you want. We have the temple. We're never going to be conquered. Such presumptuous confidence is reproved by Jeremiah and others. 
Verse 12, Therefore shall Zion for your sake be plowed as a field, and Jerusalem shall become heaps, and the mountain of the house as the high places of the forest. 